Thank you very much. It's a delight to be here. Every year I have come, each time the crowd gets bigger, more young people all the time, just as it had been on the campuses. <laughs> campuses did quite well for the cause of liberty this year, so I was very, very pleased. But certainly Jeff uh, deserves a lot of credit for what's been going on with uh, your organization as well as uh, the whole effort in the cause of liberty. And, and I have been fascinated, everybody knows that uh, it just seems like the young people uh, are very open to the ideas of liberty and it delights me. Thank you very much. <laughs> But it also takes a lot of work and effort, and Young Americans for Liberty certainly has, uh, have made their, has made their mark. And that, that to me is great, because that's going to continue to grow, and uh, I will uh, be very much involved. I, at least I'm looking next year, I believe my schedule is going to be more my own schedule, and I will, get, <laughs> I will not have to uh, be at certain places at certain times for all kinds of events. But, uh, you know, the, um, the legislative session isn't over, but uh, you probably do know that we had a little vote today in the House of Representatives. I've always argued that uh, once the Fed gets audited, the Fed will end once they find out what they've been doing. <laughs> but we, we have a few hurdles yet. One will be to get the Senate to pass it. But uh, somebody in the press today asked me, well, is the Senate going to vote on it? And I said, well, I don't know. But I do know one thing, that if they do vote, we're going to win the vote. <laughs> because the, the people in this country, thanks to your help and the help of many organizations, Campaign for Liberty and all, the country knows about it, and the Fed is a big issue. If they did have an up and down honest vote in the Senate right now, I am convinced that the majority would vote for it. Getting the vote up is another story, but uh, we'll be working on that, as I'm sure you will too. But uh, that, that is the effort, and eventually we will we'll, uh, have to deal with the subject of monetary policy. And uh, the, the Fed has to be uh, very much on our minds. We have to understand it. We have to know, uh, know the issues and know the, know the arguments. The vote today, um, it, uh, I worried a little bit that you know, getting two-thirds of the vote because it was under suspension might be difficult. Uh, all the Republicans, except one, uh, you know, voted for the bill. And the Democrats essentially split. There were uh, uh, 89 that voted against it and then 80-some that voted for it. So that's pretty good. And uh, I have always argued that the issue of money and the issue of the Federal Reserve is not a Republican or Democratic issue. And I've always argued the cause of liberty is, is and needs to be a bipartisan issue. People should come together on certain issues of uh, individual freedom. And, and, and I think we've proved this uh, point you know, with this vote today that it's very bipartisan. And the Democrats didn't go away quietly because they campaigned very hard. They spoke out strongly against it. Uh, their, their leader, Hoyer, came down and spoke against it. And they whipped, uh, they whipped the bill, which meant they put all kinds of pressure because they wanted to try to embarrass us and also to protect the, the Federal Reserve. Uh, <laughs> but uh, they failed, and that shows that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that the effort uh, at the grassroots level uh, has been very important. Governments, uh, generally speaking, reflect the people's attitudes. And you as a generation, if you have certain attitudes about liberty, believe me, the government's gonna reflect your attitudes. Right now, we're in transition, and also it takes time. Just because uh, uh, we have the ideas, and ideas are important, and ideas are spread, and a minority of individuals can spread ideas, but eventually, a majority opinion, the prevailing attitude has to represent something. And, uh, and when it does, if it's bad, it has bad government. And it's been bad for a long time. And we've had a lot of bad government for a lot of years. Uh, but now you're witnessing and participating in a shift to attitudes. And a lot of people will get frustrated. Uh, and they'll say to me, you've been up there a long time. Why didn't you get this done sooner? <laughs> but let me tell you, uh, there's been a lot of changes made in the last five years because attitudes are changing right now. And don't get frustrated because you think, well, ideas are important. We have a small group. We're spreading ideas. Ideas are spreading. Uh, and then all of a sudden you see, well, the majority now support us. You might take a, 
Some of the polls now show that it's time we quit all this overseas war and bring our troops home. But, but then you might say, well, the Congress hasn't reflected those views. So they're not instantaneous, but the most important is to have people, small groups of people, study and understanding and know what the issues are, understanding the principles and these ideas have to be carried through and then they have to, make, have to be made palatable and understandable to the uh, large majority and then you see that a reflection in government. This is not only true in a government where the voting is, sometimes I think the, this voting system here is uh, a bit frustrating at times, but even under dictatorships, if the majority of the, of the, of the people reject the government, eventually those dictators are overthrown. Even when they had kings and pharaohs at times, uh, that would eventually uh, change. But we're in the middle of this and it's gonna be moving more rapidly. These last five years, since 07, 08, things have been moving much more rapidly. The awareness of uh, monetary policy and the Federal Reserve, and now we have shifted from not caring about the war and Congress overwhelmingly supporting the war and allowing the president to go to war. We now have the majority of the American people that want something different. So this is where we're making the progress, and this is why what you do as young people and the influence as you move out and get different jobs of influence, whether you're teachers or writers or in politics or whatever, uh, this, this, is, this is crucial. And this is where I have the most optimism because there are hundreds here tonight, but literally uh, I have met thousands and tens of thousands. And Jeff, uh, not too long ago, did up a summary and I don't, I don't think I'll remember these numbers specifically, but I think we went to about 33 campuses and over 120,000 uh, young people came out for these. That to me means there is a revolution going on in this country. <laughs> And, and you're, you're in the middle of this. You're leading the charge. You're instrumental. People do know about Young Americans for Liberty. It is well known now. Uh, Jeff uh, works quietly and efficiently, and uh, he's not on TV every night, but he is well known now in political circles as being very effective and efficient, and that is because of this organization. So a group like this, wherever you go or whatever you do, you'll be responsible not, for, not only for yourself, which is the most important responsibility, and not only for your friends and your family, but you will meet hundreds and hundreds of people even today. I'll bet you most of you have email lists and Facebook lists, and you already do influence other people. And that is gonna grow as you, as you further get involved uh, this, this thing just magnifies. The need is important. There's such a great need now for answering the questions. And this is where I have the most confidence, and that is that the views are correct. I sometimes, uh, uh, you know, I, I never think that I am the person, I can deliver the message in me, I, I, I. You don't hear that. But I'll tell you what, the message is correct. I believe the liberty message is the right message. That is your personal liberty, your right to your life, your God-given right to your life. You own your life and you own your body. You should own all the fruits of your labor. And the, uh, uh, the philosophy of liberty of free markets and sound money and contract rights. This is, it was partially understood, not as well as it's understood now by the, uh, by the philosophers, but it was partially and pretty well understood, probably best ever in our country, and we enjoyed the blessings of liberty. We had the greatest prosperity ever, and we had the largest middle class. But what you're seeing and what you're dealing with and you have to handle is the end stages of a country that forgot about it, that they, they, they got too concentrated on the material benefits of freedom, forgot about freedom and thought they only had to do is redistribute wealth. Well, there's not much wealth left to redistribute. Whether it's uh, you know, young people getting out of college with nothing but debt and a tough time getting jobs, and the world is filled with debt, and uh, there's the promise that all we have to do, uh, Keynesianism is on the ropes, and we have to replace it with something. We cannot live with this idea that all we need to do is spend more money, borrow more money, and more debt, and if you don't have enough, you just print the money. 
That is dying and nearly dead, and it's your job to replace it with the philosophy of liberty. I'm convinced that uh, one of the best and easiest selling points for liberty is it brings people together. It brings people together of all walks of life. And, and that is why it pleases me that when you talk about the principles of sound money and the Federal Reserve, you bring people together from, uh, 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 from all spectrums of the political philosophy. Dennis Kucinich happened to have given the, you know, the most powerful speech yesterday in defense of, uh, of regulating and controlling and uh, looking at the, at the Federal Reserve. But it brings people together because it recognizes that we're all different and that we come together for different reasons. We can have conservative lifestyles, we can have different lifestyles, we can have different religions, we can have different tastes in our movies, different tastes in what we want to read. And we don't have to make those decisions. It's when government gets involved and they want to dictate to us. And this is why monolithic, universal, education, uh, monopoly controlled by federal government is wrong. We want individuals making these decisions, fa individuals and families and parents being responsible. But we should not be fighting with each other because if you want to use your liberty one way and somebody else some other way, you want your liberty. That is what is important. And, but some people don't like that. They say that uh, even in the Republican primary, it was very clear that some of the candidates thought that you needed a lot more regulations on your personal life, that you might do dumb things and you might have bad habits, and therefore we have to be more authoritarian with our rules and regulations. And others on the other side of the spectrum might say, oh yes, you know, it's free markets and capitalism and sound money, it's unfair because some people might get rich. Uh, well, getting rich, honestly, <laughs> Getting rich honestly is something good, but getting rich because you're in bed with the government and with the Federal Reserve and getting all the benefit, that's something else. But when, when you realize this, people should come together for one goal, and that is to have a government that is designed to protect freedom, not to run the economy and redistribute wealth, not to run your life and teach you how to be a good person, that's your job, and not to try to run the world and tell other people how to run their country and then uh, threaten them with force if they don't do it. This is the way you move toward peace and prosperity is with the understanding of what liberty is all about. The one question I get asked so frequently is, uh, you know, how, how long is this system going to plod along like this? How long can the dollar last? How long can we keep running up these debts? And there is no precise answer. In Austrian economics, it, it, uh, it teaches that you can look at trends and you can have economic laws and you can make projections of what will likely happen, but you can't do very much on timing. Timing has a subjective element to it, and uh, there's confident, confidence is subjective. Sometimes there's false confidence, and sometimes it's a reasonable confidence. Uh, confidence. One time we had confidence in our dollar because it was as good as gold. The dollar is not as good as gold. It's not much good anymore these days, and it's going to get worth a lot less, but still there's confidence in the world. And uh, as long as there's confidence, we're going to print the money and we're going to bail out everybody. But believe me, every single day we're getting closer because the prediction is, and the understanding of free markets is, you just can't do this endlessly. You can teach this to a 10-year-old or a 12-year-old if you said, oh, you want some money. Well, here, I'm going to give you a piece of paper and I'm going to write a 1 or a 10 or a 100 on it and this is money. Well, they can't be fooled, and then you tell them, well, well, let the Federal Reserve do it. Oh, yeah, then that'll be okay. Most people, <laughs> most people can figure this out. <laughs> so the timing is, is, the, is the big issue. So um, sometimes uh, Austrian economists will make sort of projections. Oh, it didn't happen. Well. Uh, maybe it didn't happen, happen yet, but the whole thing is, if they do hold it together, see, I think it deserves, uh, it has no foundation to the dollar or to the system, 
that by pure logic, it probably should, we should be in a lot worse shape. But that doesn't rule out the accuracy of the un understanding. So uh, if, if, this, uh, uh, if this continues, eventually the confidence will be lost. And that is when the real crisis comes. If it's delayed, be grateful for the delay. Because you're young, you're just getting out of school, and you're uh, you know, trying to take care of yourself. So the first thing is you, you have to know and understand and be able to take care of yourself. If everybody could take care of themselves, there would be no problems in the world. And, uh, but then we, then we have to you know, uh, be very much involved, involved in family life and local community life and, and be prepared but, but to, to be involved. But the more time we have, the more people that will be involved. Because if, uh, if you have a crisis and you have 1% of the people who know what's right, but the general population just says, no, what the problem is is we don't have enough government, which is we've, we've been arguing now for 50, 60 years. Always a problem, more government. But that's running out. People are realizing that is not the case. So any time we have means that it gives us a chance to prepare and to teach and to spread messages and so that the transition is much better. So it's really working hard to understand these issues so that you see and participate in the transition. And I think so many of you are so far along on this, and I see so many young people come to my office, and, and uh, sometimes they're teenagers in high school and sometimes in college, and, and I always remark, I say, you know, when I was your age, I'm 14 and 15, and they were very Murray Rothbard on monetary policy. You know? <laughs> And uh, I, I was like, well, when I was a teenager, I didn't, uh, I didn't have much concern about any of this. And even when I was in college, I wasn't too, too concerned about it either, because I was thinking about other things, sports and going to medical school and studying. Uh, but conditions are different now. Uh, and I think it, the problems are so apparent that this is the reason so many of you are anxious to know and understand and learn in how to do something. So it is, uh, this is available, Minister of Information was not available to me easily. We had those who were curious enough to want to find the answers and find the true thing, truth about economic policy. We had to search, we had to find the books, we had to find the foundation. And there were so many, uh, so few, and they were far between. Uh, I frequently said that the Foundation for Economic Education uh, and Leonard Reed was very helpful to me, but now there's no excuse. The information is out there. It's easily gotten. There are a lot of books available, and the message is spread. I think that has helped us these last five years, is spreading of this, uh, this, this message. Very early in the campaign, uh, five, six, seven years ago, uh, you know, uh, I, made, I made a statement, and uh, somebody came out and they said, that went, that went viral. And I thought, well, is he talking about medicine or what? <laughs> <laughs> but I soon, I soon learned what it meant to go viral, and informations go viral, and, and that, that is just wonderful. Just so you participate in the good information, the right information, and, sit and sort that out. But the most important thing is responsibility to yourself and to understand it. And a lot of people will ask me, well, what should I personally do? And, I, and you know my answer. I said, do what you want to do. <laughs> So, in, in, a group, in a group like this, you're going to have many people go different ways. Some people will want to be in politics. Uh, some people who come to my office and say, how do I get into politics and how do I get to be a congressman? I say, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> that shouldn't be your first goal. That should be secondary. Preparation, understanding the issues and being available, and there'll be a job one way or the other. And it, it doesn't, I, I mean, I feel very fortunate. I live in a time where I could have a profession. I've been in and out of politics, in and out of medicine, and also been able to participate in the political process and in the education. So have another job, be able to uh, uh, take care of yourself and something will come along. If you have the answers, uh, somebody will make use of you one way or the other. And the one thing is, is the tone of, of approach on spreading a message is very important. Because you can be 110% right, but if you go up and grab somebody and said, you know, you dumb cluck, you don't know what you're talking about, I have the right answer. Believe me, that's a minus, it's a negative, and you lose. But when they come, and over the years it happened very rarely, it's been happening more often now, when they come and they finally ask you for an honest opinion, you know that you're making progress and that you've done your homework and that people respect your answers. So you get them to ask the question. When they ask the question, then they'll be listening. 
But if there's a lot of shouting and pushing and all that, so persuasion is a wonderful uh, tool. And this is why I think it's in done personally on uh, spiritual values, intellectual matters, and internationally. This is the way it should be internationally, that we should persuade people, talk to people, be diplomatic, and uh, set good examples. That is the way we can change the world. But your group, the YAL, plus the many, many other hundreds of thousands of young people now joining this revolution, which I truly believe is a revolution, is well on its way. You can change this country for the better. You can change this world for the better. Because these ideas are not only in the United States. They're not only in the Republican Party. They're spreading, and that is very, very good. I congratulate you for your efforts and your involvement, and I encourage you to stay involved. Thank you very much.